Yeah, I see them in the street struggling. Young, dumb, and thugging. Give a fuck about nothing. Stuck at rock bottom trying to come up on something. Pumping from sundown to sun. What's up, guys? Street Justice here. Welcome back to my channel. We are back for another reaction to Game of Thrones on this Game of Thrones Thursday. This is Season 2, Episode 10. Oh, God. Valar Morgulus? Let's just go with that. I know I probably got it wrong, but let's just roll with it. But uh, yeah, this is the season finale, guys. I am super excited for it. Hopefully you guys are as well. I was actually supposed to react to Game of Thrones tomorrow and then do Peaky Blinders today, but that one's going to have to wait. And that's an amazing show because I'm only four episodes in. So if you guys have not watched that, definitely make sure you guys are checking that out. It doesn't even have to be my reactions to it. Just make sure you guys are watching that show. The reason why I bring that up is because I was actually supposed to film that today and then put that out before you see this. This episode of Game of Thrones but I could not wait I had to jump in this episode after that last one after episode 9 I know some people are just gonna say you only like that episode because there's a lot of action yeah there's a lot of action but they built up to it that's the reason why it had so much impact as well I am hype right now I don't know if you guys can tell but yeah ever since the death of basically King Robert they've been building up to that attack from Stannis and now he's actually here a lot went down last episode I'm sure you guys already checked it out if you're here right now you've already saw my recap the one thing that I've really been wondering about as well that I want to know more about is Tyrion he got sliced at the very end of the episode by was that one of Joffrey's like main guards so I guess he sent out the hit on him to just attack mid-war for at some point of the war, but I don't know why. I guess he's just had enough with him. He wants to get rid of him, but that caught me off guard. But enough of that. I just want to jump in this episode. Uh, Patreon link is down in the description below. If you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, now is a very good time to click that button down below. Smash that like button while you're there. With that said, let's jump right in. Let's check it out. Let's go. Tyrion. Lord, what happened? The murderer and traitor Stannis Baratheon suffered a stunning defeat at the hands of your father. These are your new chambers. A little cramped, perhaps, but you don't need much room, do you? You are no longer a hand of the king. Yo, he went above and beyond. For your trouble. That's all he gets? Somebody throw that at Joffrey. Do hereby proclaim my grandfather. Tywin Lannister, the savior of the city and the hand of the king. What a legend. Well, Peter Verish, step forward for your good service and ingenuity in uniting the houses of Lannister and Tyrell. I declare that you shall be granted the castle of Harrenhal. So that's what I was confused about. I guess he was responsible for merging the houses. If your family would ask anything of me, ask it, and it shall be yours. I have come to love you from afar. Tales of your courage and wisdom have never been far from my ears. She did say she wants and to be the queen. Taken root deep inside of me. Oh, they're back in front of everyone. To return your love. But I am promised to another. For the good of the realm, your counselors beg you to set Sansa Stark aside. The gods are good. I'm free to heed my heart. Where does this leave her now? I would like you. To tell me if working for Lord Baelish has been all you'd hoped it would be. I think your true talents are wasted on them. You're very kind, my lord. Allow me to return the favor. To know who you are. And, unlike your current employer, I protect those who work for me. You're a virgin, I take it. These two. Look, so initially, I thought she was bringing them back we to King Rob, but... I guess this is still Cat's plan. Ah, they lay with lions. What's your business here? Traveling a prisoner. <laughs> yeah, they're dead men. Where are you taking him? To River Run? Why, River Run? Steal from the Tullys is their dungeons you rot in. Why not kill him? For stealing the pig. He's playing right. along. What do you think of these beauties? I hope we gave them quick deaths. Two of them we did, yeah. I do know you. Uh-oh. What's his name? One. Two. Slice. <laughs> Two quick deaths. Except for one. I feel like even Jamie's a little bit impressed right now. Walter Frey is a dangerous man to cross. I know that. And you mean to do it anyway. 
We're gonna have another war on our hands. Because you arranged it. And you agreed to it. Treat your oaths recklessly and you did agree to it. If your father lived his life for one thing... My father is dead. The only parent I have left has no right to call anyone reckless. You said you saw my victory in the flames. Here we go. I did. I led my men to the gates of the seventh hell. As their brothers burnt alive, and for what? Make another shadow, baby. I've been fighting far longer than you. Have you? Show me how you fight. He is, uh, not in the best of moods right now. This war has just begun. It will last for years. Thousands will die at your command. Seasons. I feel like I would like Stannis so much more if she wasn't in the picture. Do you see my king? Show me! Don't care how many arrows they feather me with, how many spears they run through me, I will kill that horn-blowing cunt before I fall. They don't want you to sleep. Thank you for explaining siege tactics to me. You did this. Send more ravens. You killed all the ravens. <laughs> you know what it's like to be told how lucky you are to be someone's prisoner? To be told how much you owe them? Done a lot, haven't I? Yeah. Things I never imagined myself doing. You went nuts this season. You're not the man you're pretending to be. You may be right. Gone too far to pretend to be anything else. What a scene. You hear that? He's got them on his side now. Our war cries will echo through eternity. What is dead may never die. <laughs> the fuck? I'd never shut up. It was a good speech. Didn't want to interrupt. What? What are you doing? No! Let's go home. For fuck's sakes. There are many who know that without you, this city faced certain defeat. The king won't give you any honors. The histories won't mention you. That we will not forget. Oh, ah! I'm a monster, as well as a dwarf. Are you going to eat? You have a ship in the memory. I am yours, and you are mine. You're gonna make me tear up here. I'm a big fan of love and loyalty. So this is like a secret wedding in the woods. She looked different from that angle. At first I was like, is that her? Don't go too far. And she's gone. Now Arya's on the run. I forgot about this. This story arc. What are you doing here? Waiting for you. Show me how. I want to be able to do it too. If you would learn, you must come with me. Where? Far and away, across the narrow sea, to Bravos. My dancing master's from Bravos. To be a dancing master is a special thing, but to be a faceless man? That is something else entirely. I want to, but I can't. Yet. What is it? If the day comes when you must find me again. Just give that coin to any man from Bravos and say these words to him. Vala Morgulis. Vala Morgulis. Vala Morgulis. Say it again. Vala Morgulis. Vala Morgulis. Farewell, Aya Stark. What? Is this Winterfell? All that's left of it? He's still alive. He's holding on. Yeah. They burned everything. Not everything. Not you. Go now with Hodo. Go on. I'll be right here. You must protect them. You're the only one who can. Wants her to end it. She's on like a vision quest right now. Oh shit! Look who's back. It's cool to see Cal Drogo return. Take the chains off them. We want to be with you. Do you want to be with them? You will be. Your dragons were born. Our magic was born again. It is strongest in their presence. And they are strongest in yours. You're gonna keep her there with Winter, them? Winter, summer, until time comes to an end. Ooh, they're like staring them down. Dracarys. She's not even shook. Yo, she is already leveled 
up her dragon skills. What are you doing? He's trying to save his life right now. Why can't you let him fight? Okay. I'm guessing that's gonna be a season three thing. Revenge time. It's over. Nothing. There ain't shit in there. Thank you, Zara Zoan Doxos. Thank you for teaching me this lesson. You can take the Iron Throne. I'll bring you a thousand ships. Please, 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 please. Really enough to buy a ship? Aye. A small ship. Good back. What is this? <laughs> Run, Sam. Holy shit. Walking dead. Wow. Okay, this is all just setting up next season now. Oh my god. Crazy. Goosebumps. All right, guys, that was Game of Thrones season two, episode 10, the season finale. What an episode. What a follow-up episode from episode nine. I think that one was Blackwater, which is, that was definitely my favorite episode of the season. But this episode, wow, what a way to follow it up. We got to see a bit of everyone and they pretty much wrapped up everyone's story while at the same time introducing some major cliffhangers for a few of the characters. So I think the big one to go over is Jon Snow or... Sam, I guess, is what he witnessed at the very end of the episode. I think those are the White Walkers. We've seen a bit of them before. The very first episode, uh, the series premiere, we they, we were introduced to them right, right off the bat. It seems like they've finally risen up. They gathered up all their dead, and now I guess they're heading south now to take things over. I don't know if that's their actual plan, but that's what it seems to be because... Even at the series premiere, I believe that that was the most south that they've ever traveled, traveled before. And now that they have an entire army, I guess they're going to head even further south now and see what they can do, see what damage they can cause, what chaos they can wreck, and just take shit over and, I guess, kill off some people and add to their army. I don't know what, if that's their actual plan, but that would be my best guess, and I guess until they take over everything. But yeah, as soon as we saw them, I was like, holy shit, they're finally, they're finally here. It looks like that's going to be a major point for season three i can't freaking wait because i know when i started this show i was told even by a couple commenters that if you can make it through the first couple of seasons that's when it really picks up and it gets balls to the wall crazy from there so i've now successfully made it through the first two seasons which is freaking crazy uh coming from someone that had never even seen this show before and i'm only two two seasons in now and i'm freaking loving it i actually care about these characters and their fates after only two seasons so yeah i know we still have a long way to go i believe there's still six more seasons to get through so yeah i can't freaking wait i have no idea where the story's gonna go from here all i can predict now is Season, season three with the White Walkers, there's going to be some major chaos, a lot of bloodshed. One thing, one of my major predictions that I did get wrong, though, was Theon's fate. Although it's not, it's not looking very good for him right now because his own people turned against him. That caught me off guard. He gave one hell of a speech and I was almost rooting, not rooting for him, but rooting for him to rally the troops and go to war. But... Clearly that did not happen. I thought we were going to see that battle this episode, the battle for Winterfell, but that clearly did not take place. I'm not even mad, really, because, like I said, it's not looking good for Theon right now. Even though he did make it through the season, I don't see him making it very far in Season 3. I can't wait to see what Rob chooses to do with him, because he said before that, he, hey, he'll let all of them go, all the great joys and all their people, all the Kraken people, the people of the sea, but he's taken Theon's head himself. So 
I think we're going to see that. But at the same time, he showed, much like his father Ned, he sh he's been known to show some mercy. So we'll see what comes of that. But yeah, I, I don't think Theon's making it very far. And I can't wait to see his death. Uh, another thing to bring up, speaking of death, in while we're on the topic of Winterfell, seeing that older guy go, I didn't think I would be as emotional as I was. I got really teary-eyed. There might have been even been a tearfall or two seeing him go because he was always so good, always so honorable, so noble. He even said to Theon as, as part of his counsel, you're, the best advice that I could give you right now is run. Even though that you're surrounded on all sides, you're pretty much done. You could try to rally the troops, but your best bet right now is to run and even join the wall. Uh, be one of the crows, I guess, there. So I didn't even think about that. But then right away, as soon as, as soon as that topic got brought up, he's like, yeah, but Jon Snow will just fucking slit my throat and take my head, which is 100% true. And I was looking forward to seeing that as well. So yeah, Theon, you did this to yourself, man. Good character. The acting this episode, especially from Theon, the actor that portrays him, man, was so good. That one scene with the older gentleman, the one that lost his life this episode and I hate to see it. <sighs> RIP, we lose all the good ones and it really sucks to see us lose all the good ones, but Theon, you did this to yourself. I don't see you making it. <laughs> I didn't think you would make it out this season, so I don't see you lasting very much longer. And yeah, when you go, I'm gonna be happy about it. Sorry, man. To the actor that portrays them though, keep doing a phenomenal job with that because you're freaking killing it. I can't wait to see you in the final moments of the Theon character, fingers crossed how the actor portrays those final moments as well. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. But what else went down this episode? Cause there was a lot that went down this episode. The stuff with Khaleesi, that was probably the shortest held captive or shortest held prisoner I've ever seen in any form of media or anything. Because literally the second that the chains went on her and then they made it seem like she's gonna be held there for like years to come and that she's never gonna see the light of day again. Two seconds later, she says a few magical words to her dragon, and her dragon's like, hold your beer, I got this, or hold my beer, I got this, and yeah, a little bit of flames, and uh, there you go, the warlock was up in flames, dead. I thought it wouldn't be that easy though, because he was doing a lot of mystical shit where he's appearing, multiple images, cloning himself, and then, yeah, he. <laughs> I guess the dragon knew which one was real right off the bat, or I guess the warlock was too brazen where he didn't even want to do like an image of him he was just appearing the real version of himself right then and there and yeah up in flames it almost seemed too easy I, I didn't get the other guy's name the one that wanted to wed uh Khaleesi but when he was caught in bed at the end as well with one of Khaleesi's girls the Dothraki girls man that was that was brutal like what did she expect to what she's begging for her life at the end but it was so nice to see them get put in the vault the one that was Oh, the, the promise that he was making to Khaleesi, you could have all the treasures of the world, everything that's more valuable than anything is behind this door and it can all be yours or half of it can be yours as long as you marry me. And there was nothing there. So it was very nice to see. I know it sounds bad, but it was very nice to see them get put in the vault and yeah, they're going to die in there. So that that's what you get though. Like we see so many of the good people in the show go it's nice to see some of the bad people get their comeuppance. I guess that's the best way to put it. And then, yeah, I'm looking at the actual episode title right now. Man, I, I can't say it as well as <laughs> him and Arya were saying it, but Valar, Margulis, 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 there's an R in there. So, yeah, that whole scene was pretty cool. Seeing Arya free. And I even brought this up, I think, two episodes ago once he killed the guards and let them escape. Um... I didn't like the fact that she or that he didn't owe her any more favors because I really liked him having her back. That's two seasons now where she's had some very cool mentors. And do you know what? She actually brought up that I guess he's from the same place as her initial like dance sparring instructor. So, hmm, I'm wondering if we never actually saw him die in season one, right? Could he still be out there? Because if he has capabilities the same as that guy, Man, I can't wait to see them both again. I think he lives. I think the dance instructor or the sword instructor, I think he's still around. I could be wrong. That's another prediction, though. Take that one to the bank. That's my new prediction. We shall see, though. But that was very cool. And then, yeah, his face changed at the end instantly. I don't know if you guys have ever played the game Fallout 4. 
But there's a character in that game, uh, I don't know if I want to say spoiler. It's not really a spoiler, though. It doesn't ruin the story. But there was a character, I'm not going to say his name, but he changes his face all the time as well and is, like, always watching. So, yeah, it kind of reminded me of that. But it's not as instant. That guy, like, has surgeries and shit to change his appearance. This episode, Mr. Villar, he just, boom, he turned his head and he was somebody else. That, like, that was freaking crazy. So, yeah. I do like that he really does have Arya's back, though. And he even invited if you're like, do you want to train with me? Like, learn the, learn the ways, the man with no face, or I, I don't know the exact dialogue, but the fact that he put, gave her an offer to let, let her come with him, it sucked that she had to refuse, though. I did like that he, he made the offer, though, because it shows that he thinks she's pretty cool, too. So I'm sure we're going to be seeing more of him. I hope we see more of that actor, though, that, that portrayed him because with his face change, hopefully he changes his face back because that actor was pretty freaking cool. Uh, him going back and forth with Arya, that was fun all season, so I'm going to miss that. <sighs> Who knows what season three is going to bring. I, I don't want to make too, too many more predictions until I actually see the premiere of season three, but yeah, this was another very good season. I'm trying to run through all the stuff we saw. This I don't know if this reaction is going to be longer than usual or not. We'll see how the editing goes at the at the very end, but yeah, the stuff with Tyrion too. I don't think I've really discussed him much, but Tyrion, he's in a bit of a bad place. I feel like he kind of came out of it a little bit though, but it just sucks because he gave so much. When he was in the role of Hand the King this season, he, I feel like he did everything right. He was playing the game to the best of his abilities. He made it the best moves possible. He did everything in regards to what he had to work with. He made it work. He even led the, the freaking army at one point, and I don't know why his father is not rewarding him. I know, like, he's kind of like his the bastard son himself, not an actual bastard, but being a dwarf and whatnot. So he's always been looked down upon, no pun intended, from his father. Yeah, I don't... You'd think his father would appreciate what he did a little bit more, though, because he, he's shown that he's capable. So... <sighs> That upset me. Or is it really coming from Joffrey? I, I don't know. It's really upsetting, though. But the fact that Shay still stood by his side, I really love that. Like, that almost brought tears to my eyes. I even said it in, in the reaction. Love and loyalty, those are two things that I appreciate in this world. So seeing those characters, two characters that I've really come to care about, I didn't think I would care so much about Shay. And that's something I think I brought up, was it last reaction or two, two reactions ago? Her fate... I'm worried about her fate because Cersei once Cersei finds out that that's Tyrion's real love and not the redheaded girl yeah I, I don't know what's going to come of that I, I, I still fear for her safety I just want her to run away with Tyrion but Tyrion said it himself he can't so that was some interesting stuff <laughs> man so much went down this episode and then the stuff with Sansa or Sansa Joffrey's got a new queen, the one that, Renly's girl, the one that said, I want to be the queen, the queen. It came back into play. That's why I'm so glad that I included that one, that one line in the reaction previously. And when, I don't know what episode that she actually said it, but I'm glad that I included it. But now that I bring that up, where is that one pirate? Though I know a lot of you guys gave me shit. The one pirate that I said that wants to rape Cersei. Don't freak out in the comments, guys. Um, <laughs> where was he? Because I thought he was going to be a major part of Stannis' invasion. But yeah, we haven't seen him since. Unless he just got blown up in that wildfire stuff. But I know he kind of had a small role. We haven't seen him since. But I thought we would see more of him. So that was interesting. But on the topic of Stannis as well. Yeah, that fire priestess that he's still with. He's seeing the visions in the in the flames now, so I don't know if it's like a fire cult though. She's got him so wrapped up in her ways that I I don't like her at all. Hopefully she get her she gets hers at some point because he came to the realization like I killed my own brother for this for you, and what it what did it get me? Like we didn't even win this battle, but she's saying this is just one battle. There's more wars to come, so. We're going to see what's, what damage Stannis does in Season 3. Uh, King Rob got married this episode as well. That secret wedding in the woods. So that's going to lead to some drama because obviously he had promised, or Kat and him had promised that other house that he was going to wed one of their daughters. So I'm sure that's going to be a major drama point of Season 3. That's probably going to be part of his story arc. 
Oh, also the stuff with uh, Brienne and Jamie, they're still out there. I'm sure by this, um, that's that's another prediction I'll make is season three premiere. He's probably going to finally make it back to King's Landing, make it back to his family. It sucks that the entire Lannister family is going to reunite before we see the Starks reunite or what's left of them. Ah, craziness. I'm sure I'm forgetting some stuff, guys, but a lot went down this episode, so please forgive me. As always, definitely let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. If you guys can like, subscribe, it really helps my channel grow. Until next time, I am out. Enjoy your day. Peace. Well, I didn't smoke enough for you. Didn't drink enough for you. Wasn't fun enough for you. Wasn't good enough for you, Dan. You play me like a yo-yo and shit. Well, I am not the one to be yo-yo. And when you put that shit on me, then I watch you leave. Left you back and you came back in and shit on me. Drag me along for a week. So